Hello, my name is Jordan, and welcome back to the NIMBY Rails tutorial series. Um, last time where we left off, we had finished our subway system, um, and we had created the lines for our anticipated inner city. Um, I realized I wasn't pronouncing that very well. Intercity. Um, inter intercity lines. Um, so we have our local and our express. Um, I took care of a couple of housekeeping items uh, after I stopped recording. Um, first of all, I updated the codes. So we have the city, the type, and the number. And for this, we have inner city and then the line name abbreviation. Same here. Um, and I also filled in the ticket prices, uh, the fare prices. Um, so for these long distance routes, um, I've found that for the local lines, the ones that stop more frequently, um, a value of 25 for the base ticket price and then $2 per kilometer works quite well. And then for the express, light, uh, express routes, um, that it's better to drop the price per kilometer to 175. And the main reason for this is that it, as the train goes a longer distance, it has more opportunity to run into trouble. Um, a bend that wasn't designed properly, um, to run into congestion from maybe switches from a branch or something like that. Uh, where it has to slow down, and because of that, it is useful for us to have some leeway in the time it takes to go between destinations on these longer routes. Um, more leeway than on the local. Um, as you charge more uh, for your fare, for your train, um, the passengers will become less and less forgiving about delays, about waiting, um, and about the train going slow. Uh, you can fix some of that by running your estimated time slower, um, but that also reduces the amount of money that, uh, that your passengers are willing to pay. So in the end, it's better to just place these longer routes at a slightly lower fare. Um, at least that's been my experience. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to build a tram system off of the Hillsborough subway stop to feed more passengers into our subway system. And we are going to build our first intercity route from Portland City Center to Salem. Um, I mentioned that in the end of the last episode, that that's what we are going to do. Um, and this is going to, this route right here is going to be the thing that brings in the, that really starts bringing in money so we can continue expanding. Um, it was important to build this subway system first because this helps feed passengers into the central station, which gives a, a much larger number of people that might travel to Salem over these longer routes. Um, especially when we head up towards Seattle, it'll be very important that our central station is connected to a very wide catchment. Um, and that's part of what the tram system is for. By building a tram system, we're effectively going to increase the catchment of this subway system. So, let's start. All right, we want station, tram. And before we actually build the station, we want to figure out what train we're going to use, just like we did before. Now, tram lines are limited to 45 kilometers per hour doesn't matter if it's going in a totally straight line, they still can't travel faster than 45 miles an hour on tram track. 
Um, now this is quite slow. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, that's about 30 miles per hour. Um, and virtually every single train travels faster than this. So uh, what we're what we're really looking for is going to be a high capacity to length. So in this one, we have we can have up to 10 cars, which takes us almost to 300 meters or 720 passengers. That doesn't seem very good. So let's look at something else. Here's the New York R160. This is only 128 meters and gives us 915. So more passengers in a smaller space. So that's a little better. Uh, here we go. 811 passengers, 92 meters. So we could fit this guy in a um, 100 meter station. Now it has a top speed of 160, um, but that's not going to matter here because um, of the line that we're going to use. So right now the Stadler seems like the winner, but let's check just a few more. Here's the Q. No, more passengers, but the length, the length I'm not excited about. Same here. This is very similar to the Stadler, just with fewer passengers. Again. Yeah. City tram. Now, this is quite short. but also has a much lower passenger capacity. So I think in the end, we're going to end up going with the Stadler. So let's add, always, always change the color to white. Um, yeah, cool. Now we know that we can fit this train into a 100 meter station. We're going to go ahead and do that, um, like I was suggesting last time. We have it all selected. We're just going to build it straight across through the middle of the street. 100 meters. Excellent. So this is how it connects to the subway system. Now we want to build the extra stops that are going to get us our new passengers. So we want one over here in Newton. Zoom. OK. And then one down here in Newton Acres. Where do we want this? That seems good. OK. And now we want one here. OK. And it would be nice to have one over here, but we have a bit of a problem. See, we're trying to do this all as tram track. It allows us a lot of freedom about where we place the track. Um, when you're using tram, um, much like using tunnel, it actually does not care what you intersect um, as far as streets and roads. However, Trams will not cross water at all. 
um, in any fashion. So in order to cross water with tram track, you actually need to switch it to viaduct. Um, and it's a little, little messy looking on a tram, especially since we're going to be running these trams down the middle of the street. Um, it'd be a little bit strange to transition it to a viaduct just across a tiny little stream. So um, since this is a limitation of the game itself, um, we'll just work around it at the moment. So I think we'll put... I think what we'll do is we'll put a station right here. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So now we just need to connect them up. We want to, again, make sure the right type of track is selected. OK. So make sure we select from the right location. Um, all right. And now we want this. And we're going to end up cutting some corners on buildings there, but that can't really be avoided with the tools that we have in the game right now. So just going to have to live with it. Do you want to go down the street? Turn up here. And connect in. From here. I'm going to go up here, and then up here. They're already quite slow. I don't want to reduce them even further. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got this northern line. As you can see, putting in these lines on on the street, actually following the right of way, um, is quite challenging um, in a city environment where there are tight corners, um, every space is occupied. Um, but it's a challenge, um, kind of fun, to see if you can do it. Yeah, 45. So, yeah. Oh, this is, is going to work very well. Excellent. There we go. And now just one station left. And then we will have our tram system built. Um. I think we're going to take advantage of some free space for this one, though. Ah, but it has this crossing. OK. You see that? That was it trying to cross water, which it just cannot do. So we'll have to do that and kind of sneak in this little gap. Hmm. 
There we go. Just want to, whenever possible, keep the lines looking nice, even when we don't need to worry about the speed of the line. OK, so this tram system, as you can see, so this, this tram system covers um, another 6,000 people or so, maybe a little more. Um, but the whole system's only got cost us $8.3 million. So tram systems are extremely cost-effective uh, ways to build infrastructure that can enable quite a large bump in, um, in ridership if they're built correctly. Um, so we'll build this. And now make the line. So this is PDX Tram Hillsborough. Let's name it Newton Acres. That sounds quite quite posh. <laughs> All right. And then our code will be PDX T1. Um, and then for trams, um, $1.15 for the prices. Um, there's probably more optimal ways to do this. I'm not trying to say that these are the correct prices, but these are the ones that have been working for me. Um, so I'm just going to keep using them. So now let's go in and add our stations, which will be pretty straightforward. Okay, that's it. So let's estimate travel times, set it at 40, estimate 43 minutes. So for this one, we could probably just buy four, um, put them on it, set the interval to 10 minutes, and call it good. Um, I think that's exactly what we're going to do so that we can move on to something a little more, a little more stimulating. All right. Set these on the correct line. OK. Lovely. Now, our line to Salem. So we already know that getting out of Portland, uh, we're going to be under the ground for, for at least a little while. So we don't know exactly where we're going to come up. Um, but we know we're going to start underground. So in this situation, what I like to do is I like to look for straight lines if I can. So here we're going straight down. And I want to see if I can find a nice straight line pointing towards Salem. This looks promising. Yeah. OK. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to get down to Canby. Maybe right about here, maybe, is where we'll cross. Yeah. OK. So we're going to start building track, but we're going to build it before we have any of the stations or anything like that. We're going to start from the middle. Um, we're gonna, yeah. Oh, see, this is this little spacing here means that this is an actual train right away. Uh, this space, this empty space, um, right here, is where a train has been removed from the map. So there must be an actual train line that travels this route. Okay. 
Mm, yeah, I didn't think it was going to give us that one. So we're going to have to viaduct over this. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, we probably want to come up a bit and try and avoid these overpasses. Can. 272, that'll be fine. Um, I didn't actually cover this, but the train we're going to use for this is the TGV Thalus. Um, so it has a max speed of 320, but we're actually going to run it at 220 to give it some room to catch up if it gets behind on its schedule. Um, what this means is that we're pretty satisfied as long as the line stays over 220. If the line drops under 220, then the train is going to have to make up that, that lost uh, speed by um, exceeding the expected speed limit at some point. Cutting it close. There we go. 222, so that's over 220, so we're happy. Um, it looks like the train right away actually goes right here. Instead of cutting through the field, let's see if we can actually do that. So we want that point there, which means actually okay so let's delete these and we'll start from over here to connect it in so here 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 there yeah okay so Want that over to 220 exactly. Nice. Oh, it's so finicky. <laughs> okay. Just doing this in little segments to try and keep that speed, all of these over 220. Oh, but we're not going to be able to. So we're going to run into that. Yeah. Okay. So how are we going to handle that? Probably be better sacrifice the speed in that section. 133 is kind of abysmal. 178, 187. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay. That's not... It's not terrible. Bending the road really got us. Okay. So let's head through Barlow. Bend it a little bit. Ah, uh, we're going to need... Yeah. Need to give ourselves more space. Okay. And then we have a pretty great 
right away through Canby. That is excellent. And I think this was, yeah, this was where we were planning on starting to cross into Portland. Let's do that in a slightly smaller segment so that we get a smoother curve. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get ourselves on a on a viaduct and then use the viaduct to curve. up to around Peach Cove Landing. Right up about there. Okay, so now let's try and finagle this a little bit. 220, 34, 220, 21, 50 looks good. Everything's over 220. This is a very odd bridge design. Um, I don't know that you would really see a bridge curved in this way. But it's no matter. Um, there's a lot of realism in this game, but uh, you know, there's only so much that you can do. You're limited by the game mechanics. So where are we going to? It'd be nice if we could get all the way up to here, above ground. This is going to be challenging, though, through here. Uh, this is going to result in us making some pretty wacky turns. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to take a look at this, try and figure out exactly what we're going to do through this section. Okay, so. I took a look at this, and I think that our best course of action is actually to get it underground pretty soon after this point. Now, that's going to be quite a bit more expensive. Um, but I think that that's going to end up being for the best. and. As I've mentioned, we're not really going to be hurting for money. So I don't think that it's going to be a big issue. Now, another thing that I noticed is down here in Aurora, this bend that was giving us some trouble, there's actually a much better path. Instead of crossing here, follow this up and go around. Here, it's off around here and down. And that's going to give us a much more gentle 
and reasonable curve. So we're going to fix this section first. There we go. Just that slightly later. Oh boy. <laughs> that is as close as it gets. Okay. Oof. Wow. All right. And I think we're just going to live with the double crossing right there to avoid any truly terrible turns. So we want to go around. Possible. Yeah, 220. It's pretty good. That's a bad, much better curve. Okay. So from here, I'm going to take this and go straight into a tunnel. And since we're taking the tunnel now, we're just going to bring this straight out. All right, that gave us a nice straight section. Let's bring it straight down. you can see our tunnel bill is already over or nearly a quarter billion. We were trying to reduce this as much as possible, but done a good job, I think. All right, so now it's connected into Portland Central, and we just need to get it down to Salem. So can take it down, just keep following this right of way that is clearly used by a train of some kind to viaduct this section. Excellent. This looks like a place where a station goes. I don't think we have any real desire to put a station in Gervais, though. All right. Ma'am? Yeah. Handling it just fine.
Yeah. That looks very promising. So what I'm seeing here is that this seems to be a road that will take us in a nice line into Salem. Oh, there's even a break there. This must be where one of the existing freight rail lines goes, but definitely serve our purposes. Okay, so we're going to not have to viaduct that. That is very handy. Okay, this looks like it's where where it goes. So we'll cross here, I suppose. Get through there. And where do we want the Salem station? Um, if we make it an above ground station, see, this is where we really want the station. This is a much shorter distance, though. We could just add another underground station, give it a short tunnel, maybe a uh, maybe a branch. Yeah, that actually seems like a pretty good idea. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll switch to tunnel. We're going to add the station in. So, add the station in, let's see, the line is going to come right down this way, the above ground line, that is. So, we will put the station right here, 350. Kind. There we go. Yeah, about 4,000 in the catchment. That's pretty good. So now we just need to find a good space to split it. Oh, that is very handy. See this break in the road on the map? This must be where a train crosses. Um, because it wouldn't make sense any other way for the road to just break. I'm sure that it doesn't. Um, but since rails are removed from this map, um, part of the road probably got removed as well. Okay, get that overpass. Just checking the speeds. Everything is looking great. All right, so let's take this through Salem. Um, the way that it would normally go. Yeah. So those are some slow speeds, but we're not going to be able to avoid that. Um, okay. So where are we going to branch? Right here seems like it would be a good spot. So in that case, what we actually want to do is we want to select that node and delete it. Because when you build a branch, so when you use the branch tool, um, it automatically creates signals for your little branch and for the line it's branching from and all of that good stuff. 
The thing is that it signals the entire segment that the branch comes off of. So if your segment lengths are very long um, at the point that you're branching, then you it's much easier to run into situations where your trains get log jammed um, because of signaling. So it's a much better idea when you know you're going to branch. It's a it's a very good idea to try and create something like this where there's lots of lots of little segments because this is going to let us select the branch tool. So we want it want it about right about there. So we delete that. Bring it straight through, select the branch tool. We want, now at the very end of the line here, we don't care nearly as much about, um, about the speed. See this at 78, that's pretty terrible. But this is right before the station. So we're we're gonna be just fine. And same thing, we want some short segments to give the trains kind of room to figure out the signaling. Uh you want it on both both parts of the branch. All right, and for now, we'll just leave it like this. Um, obviously, this will continue on further south when we head on to um, the Corvallis, definitely Eugene. Uh, but for now, this is where line's going to end. Um, so let's rename the station. This is uh, Salem City Center. What else do we got? I don't think we rename these. Square High School Shoot Park. But one. No, oh, we'll we'll just leave those station names. Okay. So six hundred million, still doing pretty good. That's less than half our money yet again. A big reason for that is that you see we have seventy kilometers of ground rail. And that cost us seventy million. Um, we have about half that in tunnel, and that cost us nearly half a billion. Um, so building as much ground rail as we could saved us quite a bit of money, and um, that's exactly what the benefit is of taking the time to find a good route. Um, in this case, you know, I ran into some. Uh, eh, some quirks, some things that didn't go exactly right the first time. Um, but you just go through and you try and find another way. Um, and it's usually worth it. Um, especially because it's so pleasing when you get that route, when you find, when you find the route that really works. Um, it's just very satisfying. So anyways, build this. Now we're going to take our line. We already have the line built, the West Coast Local. So all we need to do is go up here. Nope, oh, not that. Wrong plot. This one. E. Go down to Salem. B. E. Okay. Now. Like I said, this we're going to run at 220, estimate the travel times, 60 minutes about. So if we wanted to do 15 minute intervals with four trains, 
So that min interval time, 15 minutes. Um, and for these, maybe we're going to set a one minute stop time, just in case. Uh, make it so that the doors don't close immediately on a train that goes so far, especially since there's 15 minute intervals. Um, okay. And that's that. We have the ticket price, price per kilometer set up, the code, the name. We have our stops. All we're missing is the trains. As I said, we're doing this. We're going to take this all the way up there. Um, still less than our 350 meter platforms, so that's great. 1,000 passengers, 320, so this should be able to do our 220 route pretty easily. Um, and we want four units. That's perfect. 56 million purchase. And we go West Coast Local. West Coast Local. Right. Oh, change this to profit. Um, and we unpause. Okay. So what do we have here? 15, 15, 16, 15. Yeah, those are all in the right vicinity. It's, uh, it's at 8 p.m. local on a Saturday. Okay, so this is, this is, very much not peak time. But despite that, if you see over here, we're running 100,000 plus profit on this line. So I'm going to take the time up. We're going to get through Sunday, and we're going to get through a few weekdays, because weekdays are, are where the money really comes in. Um, so we're going to see what that looks like after maybe say a full Monday and a full Tuesday. See what these lines look like, if they're doing okay. Um, and we can also check on the, um, we can also check on the subway line, see if it's been affected by having more passengers uh, feeding into it. Okay. So, Look at that. Yesterday, our Salem Portland line made 2.7 million in profit. That's excellent. The day before, on a Monday, it made 4 million. So, this one line right here could pay for all three loans by itself. So, if we took out three three billion dollar loans um at the 10 year mark uh this one line by itself would be able to pay for our loan maintenance and everything else would just be profit um we don't need to right now we still have 670 million um so there's no reason that we're gonna take the loans out just because we can um i mean we'd still be paying interest so um, there's no reason to do that until there's something specific we want to build. Um, but it's nice to know that this route right here is going to make sure that we're never going to become insolvent. And if we really want, um, we could speed up time and get a hefty chunk of change pretty quickly. Um, especially since we have the beta running, so we have that max speed option. So what about our tram line? So if we look at the Monday, 35,000, bad for a little tram, 31,000, yeah. So passenger numbers, 21,000 passengers, of which 9,000 transferred. The only place they can transfer is the subway, so that's 9,000 additional passengers for the subway. 
Let's see. Yeah, so last week, a normal weekday was 500. This was almost 700. This one was 600. So it definitely looks like our subway is benefiting from having the feeder line, the tram. Um, so what we can do is we can build some more tram lines. Um, I know that I want one from this stop down to Mount Tabor and up through Maywood Park. Um, and I know that I want one from Gresham City Hall down through in this area. Not sure exactly what we'll cover with it, but um, definitely want a tram line out here. Um, and then maybe we should think about that north-south subway line. But uh, anyways, um, that is that is about what we wanted to accomplish in this episode. So um, as you can see in two episodes, um, which constitute maybe 45 minutes of play um, if I wasn't sitting here explaining things and going slowly so that um, so that I can talk. Um, you can get to a point where you're entirely self-sufficient, um, where money's not really going to be an issue. Um, it's not that difficult to do. You just need to know what sorts of systems work with the game mechanics. Um, recreating, recreating lines that exist in real life blindly, um, that can be fun. Uh, it can definitely be fun to, you know, rebuild something that you know exists and kind of experience the awe of how difficult uh, and how complex some of those systems are. Um, but um, it's still a game. And you have to be mindful of the game mechanics. And in this case, the overwhelming dominating game mechanic is that passengers pay by distance. And that trips require space to originate. So as long as you have big enough stations and you have lines that are long enough and that can generate enough passengers to fill those lines, um, it's not really that challenging to, to get enough money to build as if you had checked the unlimited money uh, box at the beginning. Um, even so, uh, you know, we don't have unlimited money. Uh, we couldn't build a tunnel from Portland to Los Angeles. Um, so, you know, uh, there's still restrictions. There's still enough restrictions that it makes it fun to try and solve them. Um, but solving some of those issues is uh, what we're going to continue doing next time. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, Again, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm always interested in uh, addressing questions that people have. So if there's something you're confused about or that you feel like I glossed over, didn't really address that well, uh, please let me know. I can go back and I can give a more thorough explanation of the things that I was doing. Um, even if it's just a comment reply um, to you instead of putting it in a video, um, it's still worth it to me. So uh, I hope to see you next time, and uh, thank you for watching.